Hey everyone, welcome back to Economic Insights. Today we are going to tackle a widely debated topic in the world of economics, the free market. Many people believe that a truly free market, where supply and demand regulate the economy without any government intervention, is the key to prosperity. But is there really such a thing as a completely free market? And what are the real world examples? And what does all this mean for the future of business and investing? Do you want to die with us? Great, stay tuned. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button, share, comment and subscribe. Mainstream economists from all around the world have been insisting on the importance of a free market for centuries. This idea has been a cornerstone of economic theory since 1776, when the concept was introduced by the father of classical economics, Adam Smith, in his legendary book, The Wealth of Nations. In this groundbreaking work, Smith advocated for minimum government intervention and emphasized the power of individual self-interest to drive the most efficient allocation of resources, ultimately benefiting society as a whole. Adam Smith was also a proponent of free trade and generally argued against protectionism. He believed that free trade would lead to a more efficient allocation of resources, increased productivity and greater overall wealth for all nations involved. However, it is crucial to recognize that Smith's free trade ideas, although immensely popular and influential, have never been fully implemented by major economic superpowers like England or the United States. Both nations have often adopted protectionist measures and other forms of governmental intervention throughout history, challenging the idealized notion of a completely free market. England built its economic dominance on the protectionist policies, particularly during the early stage of its industrial development. In the 17th and 18th centuries, England implemented the Navigation Acts and Corn Laws, which restricted imports and ensured that English merchants had control over trade routes and protected domestic industries. The Navigation Acts were a series of laws passed to protect and promote English shipping and commerce by requiring that all goods imported into England and its colonies be transported on English ships. This policy aimed to strengthen the English merchant fleet, increase domestic shipping capacity and give English merchants a competitive advantage over their foreign counterparts. The Corn Laws were tariffs and trade restrictions on imported grain that were designed to protect domestic agricultural producers from foreign competition. By imposing high tariffs on imported grain, the Corn Laws ensured that English farmers could maintain higher prices for their products and shield them from fluctuations in international grain markets. These protectionist measures played a significant role in enabling England to foster its industrial growth and eventually become the world's leading economic power during the 19th century. Despite Adam Smith's advocacy for free trade and minimum government intervention, England's economic success was built on a foundation of protectionist policies that allowed it to nurture and develop key industries, paving the way for the nation's global dominance. The United States, much like England, built its economic power on protectionist policies, especially during the early stage of its development. Economic historian Paul Bayrock referred the United States as the homeland and bastion of modern protectionism. Throughout the 19th century and into the early 20th century, the United States implemented high tariffs and other trade barriers to protect and nurture its domestic industries. These protectionist measures aim to shield American businesses from foreign competition and promote economic self-sufficiency. One of the key proponents of protectionism in the United States was Alexander Hamilton, the country's first Secretary of the Treasury and the founding father. In his 1791 report on manufacturers, Hamilton advocated for tariffs, subsidies and other measures to support domestic industries and promote industrialization. These protectionist policies played a significant role in the rapid industrialization and economic growth of the United States during the 19th and early 20th century. The country's shift towards free market principles and free trade came later as it gained global economic dominance and sought to open foreign markets for its products. 
Thus, both England and the United States despite the widespread popularity of free market ideas relied on protectionist policies in their early stage of development to foster industrial growth and build their economic power. The economic miracles of the 20th century were also based on concentrated protectionist policies and negative state interventions. Here are a few notable examples. Japan. After World War II, Japan implemented industrial policies that focused on promoting exports and protecting domestic industries. The government provided subsidies, low interest loans, and targeted investments to support key sectors such as steel, cars, and electronics. These policies were instrumental in Japan's rapid economic growth and transformation into industrial powerhouse. South Korea South Korea's economic miracle was also driven by protectionist policies and state intervention. The government pursued an export-oriented development strategy, supporting targeted industries such as textiles, steel, shipbuilding, and electronics. State-owned banks provided uh, subsidized loans, and the government protected domestic industries through tariffs and import restrictions. Taiwan. Taiwan's economic success story can also be attributed to protectionist policies and government intervention. The state played a critical role in directing investment, promoting exports, and protecting domestic industries. Taiwan's focus on electronics industry in particular helped it become a global leader in technology and manufacturing. Singapore. The city-state of Singapore, despite being a relatively small nation, achieved rapid economic growth through a combination of state intervention and free market principles. The government played an active role in guiding economic development, investing heavily in education, infrastructure, and housing. At the same time, Singapore pursued an open trade policy, attracting foreign investment and fostering competitive business environment. China. Starting in the late 1970s, China shifted from a centrally planned economy to a more market-oriented approach. However, state intervention and protectionist policies remained crucial to its economic growth. The Chinese government provided support to key industries, encouraged foreign investment in special economic zones, and maintained strict control over the financial system. These examples show how protectionist policies and state intervention played a significant role in fostering rapid economic growth and development in the 20th century. While free market principles have gained traction worldwide, it is important to recognize the role of strategic government intervention in driving many of the most successful economic transformation in recent history. I ask ChatGPT, what are the best examples of the free market nowadays? It listed a few examples of countries that are known for their relatively free markets and business-friendly environments, namely Hong Kong, Singapore, Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia. ChatGPT immediately followed with the following reservation. While these countries have adopted many free market principles, it's important to note that no country operates under a completely free market. All economists have some level of government intervention and regulation to varying degrees. And that's true, even in countries where the free market is started as an ideal, there is always some level of government intervention. Governments set rules, enforce contracts, and maintain a stable currency, which should all play a role in shaping the market. Additionally, governments often subsidize industries, bail out companies in times of crisis, and regulate monopolies to protect consumers. The term laissez-faire implies that an economy can function without any government intervention. However, no economy exists without some level of government involvement. Even in historical examples often cited as laissez-faire, such as the United States during the Gilded Age, the government played a significant role in shaping the economy. Consider any country and you'll find some political decisions and government regulations behind the play of demand and supply. Every economic indicator is affected. The price of labor is kept. The price of energy is set by cartels. The price of money is primarily defined by central banks and taxation influences the price of goods among other factors. So, while the concept of free market economy is an attractive idea, it simply doesn't exist in reality. 
Governments play a crucial role in shaping economies, correcting market failures, designing the business climate for private sector and addressing issues such as income inequality. Rather than pursuing an unattainable free market ideal, it's important to recognize the role that governments play. The future of business and investing is heavily dependent on the efficiency of the economic policies of various nations. As the world continues to evolve, we can expect changes in regulations, trade policies and international relationships that will further impact the global economic landscape. So, what do you think about the free market? Do you agree that a truly free market is non-existent? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video informative, be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.